truth about Tiger King. <laughs> oh God. Tiger King. Tiger King. Tiger King. Tiger King. There is coronavirus and then there is Tiger King. That's right, Tiger King season two is around the corner and I wanted to film a video showcasing a recap on some of the insanity that was season one and why. Just for the record, I actually have not watched this. Um, my fiance loves it. I think she's watching the first season over again. This is the not second one's a coming. documentary. It really is a chaotic mess between an animal rights activist, a gunslinging mullet head, and Carol Baskin, who killed her husband. She Miss whacked him. Whacked. Well, maybe. The season kicks off with Eric Good, the director of Tiger King, and his mission. The whole premise of the show starts off with a lie. The lie is right in front of you, and it involves that famous snow leopard that was in the 100 degree Florida weather. Google the last time Florida was in the 100s, and while you're looking that up, here's the van the snow leopard was trapped in, the really hot, nasty van, was actually fully decked out in insulation, a massive AC unit, and the leopard's handler, Mark McCarthy, is a wildlife rehabilitator for over 50 years. But you know what, that isn't interesting enough, that isn't what makes up really good drama TV, so of course Eric Good didn't throw that in there. The whole thing was a disappointment. I did text him immediately after that, um, told him, you know, how could you do this to me and blah, blah, blah. He did apologize for it, but after 60 million people video, you know, seeing that film, um, it was really, didn't help us at all. Tiger King, of course, tried to enlighten us with the information of how many wild tigers were kept in captivity. The number being 10,000 tigers in captivity. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the facts. In 2020, the Journal of Zoological and Botanical... This is like a debunking and how keeping a whole bunch of fucking tigers in cages is okay. Botanical Gardens cites that there were 1,538 tigers in facilities across the U.S. If there were actually 10,000 tigers in the U.S. alone, that means that there's about 200 tigers in every single state in the U.S. And that is just not possible. We... I just, you shouldn't have tigers in cages, bro. Then meet Doc. They're not for, oh, here he goes. This is our local Tiger King right down the street. But like, yeah, they're, they're not domestic animals. They shouldn't be bred to be pets, Antle. man. And his three girlfriends, I think maybe they're six or nine, or I don't know if you know, if they're wives or girlfriends. That's a whole other story that gets interestingly messy in the series. The truth of it is that Doc Anto has three partners, three women who have each lived with him for over 20 years. And no, they didn't just show up in his front door when they were teenagers, they showed up in their 20s and they all wanted to be part of this. No, they don't live in Doc's basement and they sure as hell don't dress up in kitty cat costumes year round. We also are introduced to the term Bhagavan, which is thrown into the mix and it's Hindi for abstract, genderless god. And in the series, we get a depiction of Doc as this doctor of mystical sciences. Doc Antle is actually MD trained in China. He's not a doctor of mystical science, although it sounds really damn cool on the show. And his birth certificate shows that his middle name is Bhagavan, which you could actually find online with a simple Google search. And within that whole mess, we get to meet the- What which the you could fuck? Actually find his name is Mahamayavi? Oh yeah, was he with the cult? And online, no, they're from California. With a simple Google search. And within that is whole that why they're here? Is because of uh, Baba Mayer? Mess, we get to meet the world renowned boob job Barb. How could we forget about her, the woman who loved Doc Anto so much that she worked more off than on from 1999 to 2007 because she lived in a horse stall full of cockroaches. Although I'm not entirely sure where she lived because on Tiger King, our good friend Eric Good shows us each one of Doc's partner's homes, except Eric showed you guys the homes of all of Doc's neighbors, so we can't really trust him on that. Let's wrap this up with a bang though, literally because Boob Job Barb opens up the floodgates on episode two of season one at the 40 minute mark actually, when Eric Good asks her about her favorite tiger. We'll call this segment the expiration date of the tiger, which essentially means once a tiger has grown out of the stage where it can be interacting with guests, the tiger is sent to be killed. Because as we hear on the show, it's bad business to keep them all, right? So gunshots ring at the end of the night 
and we pour one out for the fallen homie tigers. Listen guys, Tigers and Myrtle Beach Safari has never euthanized any tiger cubs or adult tigers, nor any other animal in general. The insinuation is as foul as it is without foundation, and one of the most popular ambassador programs at Myrtle Beach Safari is their tiger cub interaction. All of the cubs that are born at the preserve are part of a breeding program, the Species Survival Trust, or SST. Cody Antle, Doc's son, has a massive audience of 35 million followers on social media. I'm pretty sure, isn't that who's talking? Social media, and all of his content is with big grown adult cats. If the cubs were just disposed of, it wouldn't work for the core of the Myrtle Beach Safari, which is big tigers in loving relationships with their caregivers. The numbers the show provides are extremely exaggerated. The show makes it seem like tens of thousands of people make it through Myrtle Beach Safari, but in reality, the tours are extremely limited. Trust me, I've been there myself and I have seen oh, it in person. I guess it's this guy. Listen, Myrtle Beach Safari is only open 90 days a year, with tours three days a week, usually on the weekends, and only 20 minutes of the full three and a half hour safari involve cubs interacting with guests. The claim that there is this industry in America of tiger cubs being exploited put into gas chambers and cremated is absolutely ridiculous. Myrtle Beach Safari has only two or three cubs at a time that interact with guests from four to five weeks of age and up to 16 to 20 weeks of age. Only eight to 10 cubs are- Again, none of them should be. Are born on the preserve a year and interact with guests within the season's time. There is always an active waiting list for Myrtle Beach Safari cubs who carry such rare genetics that they are sought after worldwide. Listen guys, Myrtle Beach Safari for magicians and shit. Is the Ritz Carlton of Wild Saudi billionaires of life preserves. You can clearly see it from the footage on the show, which is probably the one thing that Eric Good actually didn't lie about. Look at Carol's or Tim's or Joe's or Jeff's quote unquote facilities. They're all backyard menageries. Hell, I know of dog pounds that look much better than theirs. So what is the takeaway? Watch Tiger King season two. Don't watch Tiger King season two. Just keep this in mind when you watch. The show is simply made for entertainment. There's no factual evidence for a lot of the things that Eric Good filmed on this show. It's certainly not a documentary. It's just entertainment, which is why he never told anyone that he filmed what his intentions truly were, and that's why it came off as such a huge stab in the back for many. Even Carol Baskin is now suing them over the use of footage on her show for season two. If you want a true and genuine experience on where you can get to share a space with these magnificent species and learn about what it looks like to help save the tigers, please visit MyrtleBeachSafari.com and schedule a tour. Visit the day and night safari, meet Doc- Yeah, don't. I don't know, that's probably the one Myrtle Beach thing I'm not. Super.